I'm Keith Simonton, and I saw The One I Love when it premiered to rapturous reviews, including my own, at the Sundance Film Festival in January. The challenge of this edition of What to Watch, however, is talking about a film you can't really talk much about, uh, at least not without spoiling the deliciously surprising twisty plot. Elizabeth Moss, best known for her role as Peggy from Mad Men, and Mark Duplass, best known for Safety Not Guaranteed and My Sister's Sister, play a couple struggling to save their marriage when they're sent by their counselor, played by Ted Danson of Cheers fame, to a romantic weekend retreat. There, they encounter a dilemma that will test not only their relationship, but their very beings. As each new revelation unfolds, both actors give nuanced performances, peeling back the layers of their characters like onions, while we're left guessing what's going to happen next. There was a rush. It was exciting. I felt happy. And it wasn't just that. It wasn't just the time in the guest house. I mean, we had a great time. In, in the main house. Yes, we did. We, we, had, had, a, we had a good time. And it wasn't just the weed. I mean, we were connecting. We were talking. We were happy. We were, we were happy. We yes. We also had a fantastic time when we did ecstasy at Lollapalooza. But we're not going to do that every day of our lives because you die. Right. I had a chance to sit down with Mark Duplass and director Charlie McDowell, who is, incidentally, the son of actors Malcolm McDowell and Mary Steenburgen, during the Seattle International Film Festival, where The One I Love was the closing night film. Charlie, Mark, can you describe this film, The One I Love? The thing about The One I Love is it's a, it's a bad idea to describe it. We don't want anyone to know what it's about too much where they go in the theater. We watched it play at Sundance, and we've seen it play on audiences, and the less they know, the better. I, it's almost like you should go to see... Um, a romantic comedy with, with me and Elizabeth Moss and Ted Danson, and then just see what happens. Charlie, you want to expand on that at all? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, uh, you know, at, at the core of it, we sort of, we wanted to make a movie um, that really dissected a relationship and, and really looked at, you know, when you first start to date someone or, or you know, a, a new marriage, you really give the sort of the the best version of yourself and you're sort of almost playing a role a better version of who you are and and we feel like that's a universal thing that a lot of people do and then when the sort of dust settles then all of a sudden people are like hey you didn't used to do that you know and and we found that to be a really interesting starting off point and uh so from there we we kind of had that kind of core idea and then just made a really kind of bizarre movie cheers cheers to a perfect weekend together how did you come across this uh, screenplay by uh, Justin Later, correct? Yeah, Justin and I um, have been working on stuff together for a while, and, uh, and it was really a collaboration with me, Justin, and Mark, and it was sort of, um, like I said, that idea that we came up with, that sort of core theme. We really took that and, uh, and started to develop on it more, and then Justin went off and, and really put it to the page. Why are you so sweaty? Did you go for a run or something? Oh. Oh yeah, we can, is that the joke that's happening now? What? The joke where you're not gonna remember that we just did sex? Cause that's really funny. Wait, we just had sex? <sighs> okay, that's not funny. I'm not trying to be funny, I thought you were making a joke. Why are you doing this right now? I'm not doing anything, I, I, wh huh? So ostensibly, a married couple is sent on a retreat to by their counselor to uh, try and fix things. How did you pick that particular place? And yeah, well, we shot we shot it in Ojai, California, which is where I grew up actually, and um, and it's this sort of angelic, beautiful, uh, incredible place that a lot of people actually, when they don't want to live in LA, they sort of start to make their way out to Ojai because it's close enough that you can work in LA but live in this beautiful place. And um, I grew up about a mile down the road from where we shot the film. And uh, it, it was just, it was a house that we sort of, that I had been to and, and we had a sort of access to. And, and it was something that from the beginning, we really wrote it kind of specific for this place. So we, we knew the, the different structures and the guest house and the main house and different elements. To, so we started to write it specifically for that location, which was totally new and an interesting way to do things, but it really helped kind of figure out what it is, and, and the property almost becomes like a character in the movie. Can you talk about the casting of Mr. Dance? 
the casting of Mr. Danson was me calling up my mom and saying, your husband needs to be in my movie. Well, there was, a step <laughs> there was a step before that, though, which was I was like, I really think Ted should do this. And he's like, and then I have to call my mom and like ask Ted to do it. <laughs> Um, no, it, it was, it was, I think once we sort of brought up the idea of Ted, it was like he felt perfect for this role yeah. and we couldn't really picture anyone else. Um, and it was funny, it, we, we shot that scene with, with Ted, or the scenes with Ted on the last day of shooting. And, uh, and so he came into this world that we had, you know, we had all gotten really close and we had sort of had this camp-like experience and he came in and he was like really kind of nervous to like was the best. step into this yeah. world that like he hadn't been a part of yet and like my mom said that he hadn't slept at all and he was really freaked out about it. <laughs> you were talking that there is a Ted Dance and Sundance story. There is, a, there is a Ted Dance and Sundance story. It's one of my favorite stories in the whole world. Um, I, but it's a very long story but I'll, I'll give you the abbreviated the abbreviated version is, uh, you know, we were all going to Sundance to premiere this movie. This is, you know, it is one of the most exciting moments in, in your career. Um, and Ted was unfortunately not going to be able to make it due to his rigorous schedule on CSI, but he and Charlie have such a wonderful relationship. And so unbeknownst to us, Ted went um, to his producers of that show and said, I, I will be leaving this set at 5 p.m., I'll be getting on a private jet that I'm paying for myself and flying out to be at uh, my son's movie and for the premiere. And he, st he came, he stayed for the whole after party, flew right back, didn't sleep, and went right to work the next day. And that, that, that typifies the man. That's a pro. Yeah. You have parents that are in the entertainment industry, and parents like to give advice. Did you get any parental advice uh, on doing... Anything, uh, anything in the entertainment industry. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's funny because I've been asked that and I've kind of, I don't totally know my answer, but I think it was, I think the advice I got growing up was, um, I, I just, I grew up on a set, so I just started to like understand what that world meant and I, and I pushed it away for a long time because I didn't want to be in any sort of shadow and then, I, and then I got sucked back in because it's such a, rich creative environment and that's ultimately sort of how my mind works. But I, I think the best advice I got was from my mom. I called her up the day before I went to film school at AFI and I realized I had never directed an actor. So I literally had no idea how to communicate with an actor because I had always done stuff just with friends. And I called her up and I was like, how, do, how does a director talk to you? <laughs> and she was like, she was like, no, there's no, there's no like formula. Like every director is totally different. She just said like, be yourself trust your instincts and like talk to them as if they're a human like don't treat them as like an actor you know like you're supposed to talk to them this way you're supposed to direct them that way it's like be very natural and 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 i think i think that's what i ended up doing yeah charlie like, gave us. me just a lot of line reading the <laughs> yeah whole thing. it was that really was good it. i really enjoyed it. <laughs> that's that's what i took from <laughs> yeah, my mom exactly. was that that yeah. meant give line readings yeah, yeah, and give so line readings, yeah. yeah no no not like that yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sexy and Surprising, with two rich performances by Elizabeth Moss and Mark Duplass, director Charlie McDell's debut film, The One I Love, is hard to talk about, but it's not hard to say it's what to watch. The One I Love is available now on Amazon Instant Video before it opens in select U.S. theaters on August 22nd. You can find local movie showtimes and tickets on IMDb.